Hi there, I'm Sarah Damewood, and I'm going to give a quick primer on DVT ultrasound. In this quick lecture, we'll review the scan technique and also review some pathology. And really what it comes down to is trying to get those veins under pressure. In the history of people doing ultrasound looking in the legs for blood clots, when people first started, they did a more comprehensive approach. They would literally look every two centimeters for a clot down the veins in the legs. When point of care ultrasound became more prominent in emergency medicine and in other specialties, there was some literature that suggested that looking only in two points, the common femoral vein and the popliteal vein, was sufficient to rule out blood clot. However, more recent studies suggest that a three-point examination looking in three different points of the leg uh, is more comprehensive and more safe for looking for blood clots. Again, looking in three places, the greater saphenous, the femoral vein, including the, the split into deep femoral vein and femoral vein and popliteal vein. This study demonstrates the sensitivity and specificity and performance of DVT POCUS looking in three different places compared to a comprehensive radiology scan performed within 48 hours. As you can see, the sensitivity and specificity are, are, are pretty strong, and the false negatives all came from popped allele, and the false positives were lymph nodes, baker cysts, and superficial venous thrombosis. So what about those popped alleles? Well, actually, this study looked at where DVTs happen in the leg. This looked at over 2,000 patients over the course of six years, scans done in the vascular lab, and showed, well, gosh, it looks like most of the clots are in the popliteal vein. So it makes sense that on that last study that the, that's where things potentially were missed. But as you can see, it also, this study also highlights how the femoral vein is important. And so perhaps we should modify our two point, our three point protocols to include the femoral vein so we're not missing that 5% of scan, 5% of DVTs that happen. So where, where do clots happen? What happens? What's the formation here? And so what we know is that there's more turbulence at branch points. So here you see flow going through the vessels. And here at the branch point, the velocity is much higher. So there's more high shear stress. But on kind of the outside or the outer part of the flow, it's much slower and, and more kind of turbulent. You can see it's just kind of circling around. That's that lower blue arrow there. And so that's the thought process behind why at branch points things uh, are more concerning that you're going to find a clot there. It's because this difference in uh, velocity can lead to this turbulence that can lead to thrombus formation and clot adherence to the wall. So what's the approach? So patient positioning is super important here. Try to have your patient be frog leg, meaning externally rotating their hip and flexing at, at the knee uh, in this position here. Ideally, you would use the vascular probe. Uh, sometimes you'll have to use the curvilinear probe uh, if you need more depth for due to patient habitus, but usually you can get by with this vascular linear probe. And here are just a quick reminder of what the anatomy of these veins are. So you can see the common femoral coming down from the iliac, becoming again at the split, the deep femoral and femoral. And then as uh, the vein passes behind the knee, it is the, named the popliteal vein. And just remembering these three calf veins that do form the popliteal vein, the perineal, the posterior tibial, and the anterior tibial vein. So here at UW, we look in a few different areas uh, beyond just that three points that we discussed before. So here, the first place that, that we'd like you to look is at the joint of the greater saphenous. So as the greater saphenous dumps into the femoral vein, uh, you can see here your anatomy picture with the inguinal ligament. It's always a little bit higher than you think it's going to be. So just uh, kind of keep that in mind as you first start scanning through here. And here's a picture of what that looks like on ultrasound. And so remembering that um, the femoral artery on the picture is the more rounded structure that as this person is compressing is not going away, right? The artery walls are nice and strong. So as you compress, in theory, those should not um, it compress as well. In fact, if you do see the artery get squished, that might be a sign that you're pre actually pressing a little too hard. Uh, but anyway, in this picture, you see the common femoral and you see the greater saphenous dumping in. It looks like like a little ear or maybe a little hamantashen that's uh, kind of off the side here. Um, but what you're seeing is complete compression of both of those veins. And that is really what you're looking for when you're trying to rule out a DVT, making sure that the walls of the veins come together completely. 
All right, moving down to common femoral. This is after the greater saphenous has dumped in and before the split. And same thing, you're looking to see the walls of the vein completely come together without the artery being compressed. That's what you're seeing in this picture here. Okay. Next, we're looking at the split. And again, the split and are, are signs of turbulence or signs um, or places that you'd like to look for clot. And so here you can see that split. And sometimes the split isn't quite as satisfying as, as sometimes the aorta is on ultrasound when you see it split, right? You see one big circle and then two little circles. Sometimes the split gets a little bit more lateral. So you see uh, the, the uh, deeper vein more in a sagittal plane than, than the transverse plane that we're seeing. And so this is what we're looking at now is that split you can see again, both compress. And you know, sometimes when you're maybe not sure of what you're seeing, you can always go into a different plane in sagittal. And here is a view of that split in sagittal, and you can see the flow here on the color Doppler. All right, and so then um, we will look in the thigh. So somewhere, follow the vein down from that split, down through the thigh, along the medial thigh, and take another compression here. Make sure again that the walls in the vein are going to touch each other with that gentle compression without distorting the artery. And now for popliteal. So a few things about the popliteal space. One of the uh, pitfalls that we see people um, come across when they're first doing DVT ultrasound is that sometimes it's really hard to find the popliteal vein. <clears throat> and that's because they're pressing actually too hard. And so sometimes if you're looking around and you can't find the vessels, try to take some of the pressure off of the probe and it may uh, come into view very easily. It's just a very collapsible vein and it's super superficial. And so sometimes you can compress it without even realizing it. The other thing I wanted to bring up is that pop goes to the top. And so that's a phrase to remember that the popliteal vein is actually now on top of the artery in this view. You can see in this clip that the popliteal vein is also completely compressing. And again, this is what those three little veins dumping into, um, you know, forming into the popliteal vein are going to look like. So again, anterior uh, tibialis, peroneal, and posterior tibialis. Now, there are a few party tricks that you can do, so a few Doppler adjuncts uh, to add to your scan. Um, this one is called phasicity. And phasicity is measuring uh, the velocity of flow through the vein uh, with changes of intrathoracic pressure. And so as the intrathoracic pressure changes when someone breathes normally, the pressure or the, or the blood kind of sucks through the veins in different velocities. And so this is what you're seeing. This undulating waveform on Doppler uh, is a normal phasicity pattern. Uh, and that suggests that there's no obstruction from where your probe is to the chest. And so this is helpful if you're concerned that there might be a clot proximal to your probe, uh, for example, or even in certain situations, if you need to look further at for an iliac um, clot, which not necessarily is easily seen on ultrasound and may require further imaging. The other adjunct is called augmentation. And this is used to look at the flow uh, from distal to the vein. And so what you do here is you have yourself uh, or an assistant squeeze the patient's calf. And what you should see is this big rush of fluid, of blood, uh, as you can see that big signature on the Doppler uh, picture there, because that's telling you that, that the velocity is increasing as someone is squeezing. And so that makes you a bit more reassured that there's not a clot distal to your probe. All right, let's move on to some gross pathology. So here are clots taken out of a leg after a thrombectomy. It looks pretty massive and nasty. So let's take a look here. Is there a clot or not? What do you think? So just to orient you, we're looking proximal, right? So that was a pretty proximal view with a greater saphenous in plane. And yes, I think there is a clot. Now when the person tried to press, the femoral vein didn't go completely away. How about here? Well, I hope you weren't fooled by that sneaky uh, lymph node that's up more towards the top of the screen. But no, this wasn't a clot, actually. Uh, the vein was able to completely compress under pressure. What about this? Is there a clot or not? 
Yeah, I think there's a clot there. That looks like a, a little ping pong ball bouncing around in that vein. That looks pretty concerning for a clot to me. What about now? Is there a clot or not? It's kind of a trick question. Um, so there is a clot, but technically it's in the greater saphenous, which is a superficial vein, not a deep vein. But gosh, like that would make me pretty nervous as I see that clot just trying to drop into the femoral vein. So technically, yes, there's a clot, but it's technically not a deep vein. All right, and now we've moved into the sneaky popliteal. What do you think? Is there a clot? There is a clot. Remember, pop goes to the top, and so you're seeing two anechoic circles. The one on the bottom is the artery, and the one on the top is the vein. And so with compression, you can see distortion of the soft tissue. With compression, we're not seeing that vein collapse. So there is a popliteal vein thrombosis there. Well, what about this? Is there a clot or not? We're still popliteal. Very tricky. It is not a clot. Um, it is a Baker cyst. And so here you can see it looks like a little cartoon speaker bubble. Um, that's the kind of pathognomonic appearance of a Baker cyst. On the picture, you can see actually where the popliteal artery and vein are. They're usually a, a little to the side when you're looking at Baker cysts. So easy to be distracted, easy to be confused, uh, but you won't be fooled again. All right, take home points. Uh, again, you're looking for a clot. And so the main uh, view of a clot on ultrasound is seeing if there's compression or not. If there's not compression, then it's probably a clot. And then keep an eye on all those branch points of the vein. That's where the, the turbulent flow is going to be and where there'll be more likely to be a clot. All right, thanks so much.